Hey everybody, welcome back to Matt's Off The Cuff Gaming Channel. I am your fearless host, Matt. How's it going today? Well, we are back here with another NFL playoff video. And I want to say that um, my predictions in the divisional round were average. <laughs> so as you know, I had the... Uh, so I went, um, I went back and looked. Actually, I picked the Titans to beat the Bengals. I thought I picked the Bengals to beat the Titans. Um, when we did, when I did all of the the Madden simulations, um, I remember the Bengals won six out of ten against the Titans, and I th I was like, oh, that 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 matched my prediction. But I went back and watched my video, and I was like, no, I actually picked the Titans to win. I thought I went three and one, but then I was like, no, I actually went two and two. So anyway. Um, so let's, I want to talk about these games real quick and uh, then get on to what I see happening in the conference championship games. And, of course, we'll do Madden simulations later on in the week. Um, I, I believe my Madden game, which is a PS4 game, I believe it will work on the PS5. I just got a PS5 last week, so um, I believe it'll work on, on there. Uh, if not, we'll plug the PS4 back in and we'll probably plug the PS4 here in my office because I have a TV right next to my computer. Um, and we'll just do it from here. Um, anyway, okay, so let's first talk about um, switch over here. Do do do. Look at these pretty little games here. Let's go ahead and zoom in here so it's a little easier to see. All right, we'll start with the Saturday games. The first game, the Bengals and the Titans. Bengals win 19 to 16. Um, Again, apparently I picked the Titans to win, um, uh, but but my simulations showed that the Bengals were going to win. Again, I, I thought I went with the simulations pick, but I was wrong. Um, so this was a very close game, obviously, as you can see. Um, I don't believe the Titans actually ever led this game. I think the Bengals led the whole game. I think it was tied. Yeah, it was tied at, um, at 16 uh, when the Titans scored that the touchdown to, uh, to tie it. Um Look, this game, similar to the wild card game against the Raiders, the Bengals are getting a lot of love. They're getting a lot of credit. They're getting a lot of benefit of the doubt uh, for the national media right now. They are the golden child team. They can do no wrong. Again, I, I, I think they're a very talented team. They obviously beat my Kansas City Chiefs uh, a month ago, and the thing, the thing with that though, as I've mentioned you know, previously in, in other videos, that game was very, very strange. Um, the Chiefs had a lead in the first half and were dominating that football game. And then just the second half, they couldn't do anything. Now, credit the, credit the Cincinnati defense for buckling down and winning the game. Um, of course, we all know there was questionable officiating in that game. Um, I'm not going to say that's the reason the Chiefs lost, because there's a lot of reasons the Chiefs lost that game. They're, I mean, they... They shot themselves in the foot. Cincinnati obviously had a big reason uh, for that as well. They're not the Chiefs aren't playing in a vacuum, and uh, but you you just you can't ignore officiating it as well. It is a component of every single game, um, but it's never the sole reason why you lose. Well, the thing is that if you ever let a game come down to be decided by officiating, you probably could have done something else to make sure it doesn't come to that. So. But sometimes that's overly simplistic. Um, but anyway, so back to this game. The Bengals, the Bengals got by the Titans, nineteen to sixteen. Um, you know, Joe Burrow throws for three for for three fifty, I believe. Oh yeah, it's right here on the screen, three forty eight. Um, no touchdowns. Threw an interception. It was a it was a really kind of a fluky interception. It was it went off the receiver's hand, and then the defender kind of came out of nowhere and swooped it up and picked it up right before he hit the ground. It was a tremendous interception, actually. Um, and they had to review it. I, I When I saw it in real time, I was like, that's not an interception. That ball hit the ground. And uh, But they reviewed it, and it was it was an interception. They made a great call. Um, you know, Derrick Henry came back in this game and was a non-factor. You know, he rushed for... I think he had 21 carries for, I think, 61 yards. It, very reminiscent of his AFC Championship game performance against, against the Chiefs two years ago. Uh, look, Derrick Henry is on the downward spiral of his career. You cannot take that much punishment as a running back and expect to just always be good. 
Uh, running backs, they have a very short lifespan in the in the NFL. Uh, they're a dime a dozen. That's why I, if I was an NFL GM, now Grant, I'm not an NFL GM. I'm just a regular guy having a regular job, you know, living in the suburbs <laughs> here in Kansas City. Um, but, you know, I follow football. I follow sports. I'm, I, I, you know, my opinion is just, is not something that's just uneducated. I study the games, you know, not as much as the G- NFL GMs and NFL coaches do. Of course not, because I don't get paid for that. But I know enough about it to make educated guesses and educated, you know, opinions and have those educated opinions. Um, I would not draft a running back in the first round, maybe not even the second round. I think you can find tremendous value in running backs in the third round because I've seen it happen with the Chiefs. I've seen it happen with many other teams. Um, so, I, I mean, I, when was Henry drafted? Was he a top 10, top 5 draft pick? I know he was a first round pick. And, and great. He's been, he's been fantastic for the Titans. But, but you cannot build a team around a running back in today's NFL. You just can't do it. Tennessee was the worst number one seed I've ever seen, and I said that in a previous video. I said they were completely overrated, but, you know, they did beat the Chiefs, and they tied with the Chiefs for conference record, so they got the number one seed. Um, they were overseeded. If this was the NCAA tournament, I, we would say it. We would say they were overseeded. Um, they didn't deserve that number one seed um, for based on the overall body of work. Um, but they got it because, you know, the – the Chiefs had some deficient, you know, efficiencies, de- deficiencies, defensive deficiencies. There we go, in the first part of the season, uh, which allowed the Titans to get the number one. Se- I mean, twelve and five to be the number one seed. Come on, <laughs> really? That's a, it's not a great record for a one seed. And you know, I can make the case that the Kansas City Chiefs should have been fifteen and two. Definitely should have lost to the Titans. Definitely should have lost to the Bills as as they did. Uh, but you know, the Ravens, the Ravens, the Bengals, uh, and the Chargers game, all three of those games, the Chiefs should have won all three of those games. And, you know, had they won just one of those, you know, Tennessee would have been exposed in the wild card round like they should have. So Tennessee is now 0-3 as a, as a number one seed in the AFC. 0-3. They've never won in the divisional round as the number one seed. So what does that tell you? That tells you you're building your team wrong. They're building it around Ryan Tannehill, which is a mistake. Ryan Tannehill threw four interceptions. Three interceptions, four interceptions. He turned the ball over too many times, including the first pass of the game. Ryan Tannehill is a game manager quarterback at best, okay? The only way you're going to win a Super Bowl with a guy like that is if you have the 2000 Ravens defense, okay? And Tennessee does not have that. Yeah, they sacked Joe Burrow nine times in this game, um, which is another problem. We'll get to that in a second. I, but Tennessee doesn't have that. So Tennessee's got to look themselves in the mirror and find out what they want to do at quarterback. That's going to be paramount uh, for them going forward. Um, as for the offensive line issues of the Bengals, look, I, the Bengals have not looked – they've won these two games. They beat the Raiders on a very controversial officiating in, in that game. Um, obviously, we, you know, I talked about that last week. Um, don't need to rehash that here. And then they squeaked by the Titans by three. How, how long can they keep doing this? I mean, they, honestly, they had the weakest path to get to the AFC Championship game. They had to beat the Raiders. The Raiders are a fine team, but, look, the Raiders, in my opinion, they, they got, they benefited from getting the, a late season boost um, due to scheduling and snuck into the playoffs, you know, after outlasting the Chargers in that ridiculous game at the end week, in week 18. And then they got to play the worst number one seed of all time in the Tennessee Titans, a team that the Bengals matched up well with, but still barely beat. So, you know, the Bengals' offensive line is... I I am so surprised that Burrow put up the numbers he did this year behind that line, being sacked as many... He led the league in in sacks taken. And part of that's on the line. Part of that's on Burrow, though. Burrow holds the ball way too long, always looking for the big play. Um... I think it's going to be to his detriment eventually at some point in his career. He's going to get, he's going to take too many hits. He's going to take the wrong hit at the wrong time at some point. He already, I mean, he got injured last year, tore his ACL. Look, that's, it's not out of the question for that to happen again. You've got to get rid of the ball faster than he does. But congratulations to the Bengals for making the AFC Championship game. Um, and we'll see what they do going forward. Uh, next game here on the list uh, 49ers and Packers. Look, this game was a dog. 
I, it looked like it was going to be a route for the Packers after that first drive. The Packers drove down and just precision efficiency and just scored a touchdown with just utter ease. And I'm like, geez, this is going to be a 35-3 to just blowout for them. And then they didn't score again until they got a field goal late in the fourth quarter. Look, Aaron Rodgers is a joke, okay? I'm just, I'm just going to say it. Aaron Rodgers is a joke. Uh, the guy is more concerned about his passer rating and not throwing interceptions than he is about throwing the ball downfield and trying to win a game. He throws to Devontae Adam, and that's it. And he's always been this way. He's always looked for one guy to throw to. Um, look, there is no mystique about playing at Lambeau anymore in the playoffs. You know, since Michael Vick went in there and, and won that game, the Packers are have a have an under five hundred record at home in the playoffs. I thought this was a place where they where it was supposed to be impossible for a te- teams to come in there and win. And Aaron Rodgers is now what ten and twelve in his playoff career, and he has the one Super Bowl title. So I can't like you can't take that away from him. He has won a ring, um, can, you know, and good for him for that. But the Packers have been the number one seed the last four years and have just had these really ridiculous playoff exits. Uh, twice now to the 49ers, maybe three times to the 49ers. I know it happened in 2019, here, now here in 2021. You know, it's 2022. It's, I mean, it's a 2021 season. Um, the 49ers had no business winning this game. And... Jimmy Garoppolo, once again, played an absolutely horrendous football game. <laughs> but somehow his team won. because they, they won because they blocked a punt at the end of the game. And that, that's, that's what sealed it for him. That's how they won the game. And uh, I, I just I don't understand how in the world um, the 49ers keep winning games like this. They have a great defense, of course. At some point, though, that complete lack of ability of your quarterback to make plays in big games is going to it's going to come back. Right now, the only time it's come on back and bit them in the playoffs is against the Chiefs in the Super Bowl, and they darn well almost won that game. Um, that took a great performance by Mahomes in the fourth quarter for the Chiefs to win. And uh, but Garoppolo didn't play well in the Super Bowl. He, he was he had a couple nice drives, but. Man, he had he threw two interceptions. He was he looked rattled most of the game. He just he wasn't he wasn't great. I mean, they scored twenty points. I, Garoppolo did nothing in this game. Absolutely nothing. There's no credit, but some but somehow this counts as a win for him. He's now four and one in the playoffs. That's his record. So, and the Packers. Who knows what's going to happen with Aaron Rodgers next year? I I I think he's going to keep playing, but I don't think he's going to be with the Packers. I, I think the Packers are. I'm uh, going to be a middling team going forward. Uh, Jordan Love is not a good quarterback. We saw that against the Chiefs this year. Uh, Chiefs were fortunate they didn't have to play Aaron Rodgers in that game because Aaron Rodgers is a great regular season quarterback, and he sucks in the playoffs. Bottom line. Uh, we'll get to the Chiefs' bills. I'm going to skip that one. I'm going to go to the rams Bucks game first because that's kind of going in order here. Um, I picked the, I did pick this game. I picked the Rams to beat the Bucks. Um, you know, if you want to go back to my prediction video from last week, I, the reason why I picked it, I typically I'd go with a better quarterback in matchups and Matt Stafford against Tom Brady. Obviously Tom Brady is the greatest quarterback of all time. Um, I'm not going to say Stafford's a better quarterback than him, even though Stafford played a better game than Brady did. Brady's, I think still has the edge, but the reason why I went with them is because of the the problems on the injury side that the that the Buccaneers had, and I thought the Rams would win this game by seven to ten points. And honestly, after they went up twenty-seven to three, I'm like, uh, this I I wasn't even thinking the Falcons Super Bowl meltdown. I was like, this is yeah, I'm sure the Tampa's going to get a garbage touchdown or two, but you know the Rams are going to get another one because they couldn't stop them moving the ball. And but then the weirdest thing happened: the Rams just kept fumbling the football. Um, I believe the Rams fumbled four or five. They lost four or five fumbles in this game and still won. And, you know, you go back to the Bengals game. The Bengals had Burrow sacked nine times and they won. These are these are things that just don't happen. 
um, especially in the playoffs, um, and how the Buccaneers, who came back and tied the game, how they didn't stop the Rams and just somehow won that win that game. I, that's a that's a travesty, and but it's that was a game that seemed like nobody wanted to win. It was they were both teams were trying their darndest uh, to give to give the other team the ball uh, or give the other team the win. So, like I said, my prediction came true. The Rams did win. And uh, now the Rams will play the 49ers uh, for the right to go to the Super Bowl. Um, so we'll get to those previews here in a second. So let's talk about the final game. Obviously, the game that I cared the most about as a Chiefs fan, as you can see, um, was the what I told my son as soon as the game was over, the greatest game I've ever watched, the greatest football game I've ever watched in my life. Um, now, recency bias sometimes can get us locked into saying that over something we just saw. But honestly, when it comes to the all you know all the games that I have watched in my lifetime, <clears throat> you know sometimes we confuse greatest with greatest games with with games that uh, maybe had an exciting finish. You know I think back to the Steelers and uh, Cardinals Super Bowl that had a, just a fantastic finish, but that was a dog of a game, and that was two teams in the Super Bowl. Honestly, that in my opinion didn't deserve to be there, but they just they each went on these playoff runs and made I think they were both nine and seven if I'm not mistaken uh that year maybe the Cardinals were 10 and six but they neither one of those I think they both had to win a little, quite a few pl- road games in the playoffs even just to get to the Super I know the Steelers were a six seed that year um and and so the, <laughs> some people list that as one of the greatest games I disagree and then of course there's the Patriots and Seahawks game the you know um the, the Super Bowl people li- list that up there yeah, okay, I, I can I can see that. And, of course, you have uh, the Chargers and Dolphins game from 1981, um, which was definitely an exciting game. Of course, I was only two years old, so I didn't see that game. Uh, just, you know, just read about it. Um, but this game had, had it all. And people talk about, there were some comments made this, like, well, how can it be one of the greatest games ever? If the defense couldn't stop anybody, look with with a two minute at the two minute warning in the fourth quarter, it was twenty six to twenty one. The Chiefs were up by five, twenty six to twenty one. You know that's not you know thirteen to seven. You know and you know Chicago Bears playing the Detroit Lions. You know and you know from the you know from the old days and they're just slugging it out on defense. I mean it wasn't that, but I mean you know twenty six twenty one is not a shootout either. That's a fairly typical when I say typical score I'm talking about just the total points from a total point perspective it's a typical score at that point and the Chiefs defense had done enough to win the game up to that point Uh, they had stopped Allen four times on drives that the Bills had punted four times the Chiefs had only punted twice and it's now, right after the two-minute warning, the Bills scored a touchdown to go up, you know, 29 to 26. And then they left too much time with the Chiefs, and obviously the Chiefs go right down the field and score. Then the Bills go right down the field and score again, and then the Chiefs have 13 seconds and tie the game. There's a lot of talk this week about how Sean McDermott made a mistake on his kickoff with 13 seconds to go that he should have squibbed it or, you know, done what what are they called those uh really high kicks that maybe are designed to be caught around the 10 or 15 yard line um personally it's 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 hard to fault him for his decision there and i sometimes i wonder you know the bills obviously were the team that was victimized in tennessee on the music city miracle um, which honestly shouldn't have happened. That, that was a forward pass by Frank Wycheck. Um, it, and you say, no, it was. yeah, it, it was. It was a forward pass. Um, it shouldn't have happened. Um, it's pretty clearly a forward pass. The Bills should have won that game. Um, but I'm some, I don't know, none of the people on the roster, or the coaches, none of them were a part of that. So uh, maybe they weren't thinking about it. But at least that's where my mind first went when people started talking about this. I was like, well, maybe that entered their minds. Maybe they were just snake bit as a franchise. Like, we can't allow some crazy return on a touchdown or a kickoff here. Um, but the Chiefs, their longest kickoff return this year was 39 yards. I mean, they don't have Dante Hall back there anymore. And Tyreek Hill doesn't return kicks. Um, 
obviously Pringle would have had a touchdown against the Bengals, but they called it back because of a, of a holding call. Um, but other than that, 39 yards is the longest kickoff return the Chiefs have had this year. Um, now they don't get many op- opportunities to for that because most kick most kickers kick the ball through the end zone. I, I think that's probably the the best decision that honestly you could have made. Kick it through the end zone. You still only have 13 seconds. You you play defense for a down or two. You win the game, and they did they didn't, and they. I in, in you know Sarin Petra who's on the radio here in Kansas City, he made a great point um, about how. You know, in this modern day culture where a lot of football fans they play, you know, the the Madden video game series. And they're so used to like, I'm gonna press this button and this is gonna happen and it happens, okay? Um, but in real life it doesn't always work that way. And, you know, kicking a squib kick. So I the best the big talk is like they should have squibbed it because that would have taken a couple extra seconds. Um, you can still make a fair catch, okay? You can still call for a fair catch on a squib kick, even if the ball is rolling. Um, and no time would go off the clock. Now, it's much more difficult to do that because you don't know where the ball is going. Um, but still, you you could still get into a point where... Um, sorry, I was seeing if I got a text message. You could still get into a point where you can get... You can do that. Um, and what if the squib kick is unsuccessful? What if, what if he whiffs, not whiffs on it, but hits it to where it only goes a handful of yards or it goes like 10, 15 yards and they, they pick it up and then maybe a second goes off after they touch it and then, and then they are down at themselves. But now the ball's on the, now they have the ball almost at midfield, you know, or their own 45-yard line. Now, they, and say there's 11 seconds left. Well, now you've put them in a better position definitely to kick the field goal. At least on the 25 you're forcing them to make to complete two medium to long range passes to get, even get into field goal range. And when when we were on, when the the Chiefs got the ball, you know, I I didn't turn the TV off. I was cal- I was very calm actually. I was very upset about the previous touchdown, but at this point I was calm. I was I think I had resigned myself to the fact that I said I th- I think they're going to I think in my mind I was like they're probably going to lose this. And I was just trying to mentally prepare myself to deal with the fallout. Um, but then in my mind, then I thought, you know, Patrick Mahomes has done this before. I'm like, how long of a field goal can Butker kick? Can he kick a 65 yarder? And I'm like, probably not. But if anyone was going to try, I would, I would definitely give him the opportunity because he does have a really big leg. Um, sometimes he's not the most accurate as evidenced by missing a field goal and an extra point, um, in this game. Um, so, but they they they, went, they they drove down two plays. The Bills played extremely soft. Uh, I don't understand what the Bills were doing on defense there, and the Chiefs kicked the field goal and tied the game. You know, McDermott's getting crushed for his defensive call there um, on basically not bumping the receivers at the line. But, hey, you, you do what you do, and the Chiefs took advantage of it, and you know, they tied the game. And now for the biggest controversy is the overtime uh, in terms of, like, the coin flip. Look, you know, back in 2018, obviously the, the Chiefs and the Patriots were tied. Patriots won the coin toss. Brady drove down. Touchdown. Chiefs never got the ball. Patriots win. Would I have liked to see Mahomes get a, ch- a chance to match it? Well, of course. I'm a Chiefs fan. Of course I'd want Mahomes to try to match it. And then the Chiefs to have an opportunity to win. But that's not the rules, okay? You play the game according to the rules that are there. And that's not the rules. The rule is, is that if, you sc- if you're the first team to get the ball and you score a touchdown, the game's over. Kick a field goal, the game continues. And you know, honestly, I, you know, I was, I was not upset about that in 2018. I was upset about D Ford lining up offsides because that game should never have gone to overtime. It should not have. D Ford backs up two inches, and the Chiefs are going to the Super Bowl. I, that's not even debatable. That is a that is a hard, solid fact. It's not debatable. The play happened anyway, and Brady threw an interception. And some people try to make the point that's like, well, Brady wouldn't have thrown that ball because he knew he had a free play. He didn't know he had a free play. The flag wasn't thrown until after, almost until after the ball was out of his hands. He had no idea that that Ford was offsides. Um, I mean, as a matter of fact, we didn't even see the flag until after the play was over. And anyway, that's that's not the point of this video. Um, I think that the uh, 
I, I think that you just keep the rule the way it is. I don't, I don't want to see them go into the, what the college has. Um, there is some discussion that, you know, and I said that, you know, what if you have a system, I was talking to a friend of mine on, we were texting after the game and I said, uh, you know, what if there was a system where you just, as long as you match what the other team does, the game just keeps going. And he's like, he's like, Oh, I, I kind of like that. And then the more I thought about that, I was like, you know, the defenses are so gassed at this point. I mean, those games could go on for a long, long, long time. Um, but what it does is it forces the defense to make a stop. So now, if you now if you did it the other way, what if you just said, okay, each team has a has a possession, and then, but after the second possession, the game the game goes to sudden death. Well, that changes the whole dynamic. Of, of overtime. You don't want the ball first at that point. You want the ball second because you want to know what you need to do. And because if you, because you would play completely differently, um, you'd be more apt to take a field goal with having the ball first. You know, on fourth and seven, you're not going to, you, points are so critical there. But if it's fourth and seven, and you're the second team to have the ball, and the other team didn't score, and it's you're at the 30-yard line, well, you're not going. Of course you're going to kick a field goal because you know what you need to do. Or if you're down by three, what do you do there? Do you kick the field goal? Or do you go or do you go for two? Or, you, or do you go on the fourth down? Look, Rich Eisen, on his, on his YouTube page, on the Rich Eisen Show, he has a wonderful about 10-minute video on this. And I'll, if I remember, I'll link it in the description. And... Um, uh, it, he he talks about unintended consequences of changing this rule, and I completely agree with him on this. I don't think the rule should be changed. You know, it, it hurt the Chiefs uh, four years ago, and it helped the Chiefs this time. Now, when I say it hurt and helped, the bottom line is, is that the football is a team game, and the defense has to ha- – you have to have a defense that can stop the other team. The Bills are the number one rated defense in the NFL in terms of yards allowed and points allowed. And the Chiefs torched them. So that's more about what that's more about Mahomes than it is about than it is about the Bills defense. And what really, really saddens me about this whole thing is that the narrative the past two days has been has been all of, has been all about well Josh Allen didn't get his chance instead of look at what Patrick Mahomes did in this game. You know. 33 out of 44 for almost 400 yards, four touchdowns, three touchdowns passing, and he ran for one. Um, you know, he had 69 yards rushing. Allen played a, a great, great game. He followed up a perfect game with not a perfect game, but he, but really, 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 really good game, and which is not typical of Josh Allen. Usually he's got a great game, and then, and then it goes, it drops off. You know, he's kind of a roller coaster. But he's, he followed it up. He sustained it. Like I said, it's hard to do two perfect games in a row. But he played as perfect, almost as perfect as you could. Now, a lot of that was due to the fact that Tyron Matthew was out on the first drive of the game. And that really opened up the middle of the field. I mean, um, Davis was just, he was always wide open. And sometimes it was because, you know, he faked out the corner. And the, I know Hughes fell down on one of those touchdowns. But look, I you know, wide open across the middle of the field, that's where Matthew usually is. Now, I'm not saying Matthew would have prevented all four touchdowns, but I, I don't know if Josh Allen always takes those shots if Matthew's on the field. Who, I mean, Matthew's a, is a much better player than the, what the Chiefs put out there instead. Um, you know, which obviously Sorensen had to play almost the whole game. And Sorensen didn't play a terrible game. I don't remember him getting beat. It was the corners that were getting beat. or, But maybe it was more of a fact that it just... Matthew wasn't there, and um, but the Chiefs were able to overcome that in overtime. They were able to beat the Bills, and man, even though they were the favorites in the game, almost all the experts were picking the Bills. Um, I I did a compile list of like five or six different screenshots, and all of them were picking had picked the, the Bills to win. It was it was incredible, and uh, it the. I don't understand this talk about how Josh Allen is Patrick Mahomes' is equal. It's, it's not true on accomplishments. It's not true on hardware. It's not true even on statistics. And 
the people that talk about this, they're like, oh, you can't talk. You can't use statistics to prove this point. I'm like, that's all we have to use. I mean, yeah, we have our, we can use the eye test on games we watch, but Josh Allen has some real clunkers. And I want to dispel this whole notion that Patrick Mahomes in this one, he had a down year. Um, from a quarterback rating standpoint, yeah, it was his quote unquote worst year. But his worst year by his, because compared to his own standards of absolute insanity greatness. And, and even in his quote unquote down year, all his numbers were better than Josh Allen this year. Josh Allen took a much further, he, he regressed much more from a statistical standpoint in 2020 or 2021 that he did from 2020. And I, so you could make the case. I mean, you know, he had a good season this year. Don't get me wrong, but he's had two good seasons. Okay. He looked a lot like Mac Jones in 2019, um, you know, and, and played a, an awful, awful playoff game against the Houston Texans. You know, in 2018, his first year starting, which was also Patrick Mahomes' first year starting, uh, Jones was awful. I, I mean, Jones. Um, <laughs> uh, Allen was, he was awful. Uh, 10 touchdowns, I think he threw 15 picks. Um just was not a good quarterback in his rookie year. So, so the Chiefs are moving on. So here, let's go. Let's go back over here. Let's talk about. I only have about five minutes uh, to wrap this video up. We're already at thirty minutes. So, um, oh man, is this thing completely? Is it smudged? looking at over here maybe it's just it's, I think it's out of focus oh well well if it's out of focus that's fine whatever you can we'll have to off the oh there it goes now it's now it's working fine maybe it just had to reset itself I don't know um, yeah so I just like I said there's got about five minutes left here um, on this video so I want to do just a quick preview and I'll, I'll do a more in-depth analysis of these games uh, Rams and 49ers. 49ers are, in this iteration of these head coaches, the 49ers are 6-0 and against the Rams, including sweeping them this year. So they've they won their, they've swept the season series the last three years. I don't, I can't pick the 49ers to win a seventh in a row against the Rams. I can't. Even though all the evidence says that the 49ers should beat the Rams, I'm never going to pick Jimmy Garoppolo. I mean, I, I yeah, I picked him to beat the Cowboys because I think the Cowboys are frauds. Um, but Jimmy Garoppolo is just, he, I don't understand how he's winning these games. Well, he, I, I know how they're winning the games. They're winning the games on, you know, a, a timely special teams play and some great defense when it matters. Uh, I just, that, that's not sustainable, but it's worked so far. So I guess that maybe it is sustainable. Um, so my prediction here, like I said, I'm going to go with the Rams to beat the 49ers, even though the Rams played a fairly poor game against the Buccaneers, but managed to squeak by. Yeah. And Chiefs and Bengals, like, I don't, again, I think I mentioned this in another one. I don't understand why the Bengals are getting all the benefit of the doubt and all this credit. The Bengals, when they beat the Raiders, they won their first playoff game in 30 years. And then yesterday, or this weekend, when they beat the Titans, that was their first road playoff win in franchise history. The Bengals have been around for a long time, almost as long as the Chiefs. Matter of fact, I think they have been around as long as the Chiefs, um, at least from the from the uh, NFL from the NFL days. Um, I don't understand how they're getting the. They they went ten and seven this year. They had some bad losses. Now, they had some great wins too. They beat the Chiefs. But is that going to repeat itself? Again, uh, when I make when we talk more in depth about these matchups, it's going to be I'm going to talk about what Patrick Mahomes has done in the playoffs. And we just don't have a we don't have a record of, of Joe Burrow. Joe, Joe Burrow has played two games in the playoffs and we'll and I'll I'll break those down. Um, yardage-wise, he's had pretty decent time, but you know, he's turned the ball over. He's taken a ton of sacks. And he's won two games by a combined ten points. Patrick Mahomes is Patrick Mahomes is off. They they've scored eighty four points in two games. I'm sorry. I, even though I'm a Chiefs fan, 
I'm a homer, obviously. I, there's no way. There's no way the Bengals beat the Chiefs twice in, this, in the same season. And I'm going to go over those numbers in the next video, too, about when Patrick Mahomes faces a team for the second time that season in the playoffs and what he does to those teams. Um, it's pretty interesting. So, um, And then Rams and Chiefs Super Bowl, this would be – this would be the second year in a row the Chiefs would have to play the NFC team in their home stadium if this Super Bowl matchup happens. I mean, people talk complain, oh, the NFL, they're just all for the Chiefs. They do everything you know, to try to get the Chiefs to, to win at every all. Oh, I'm like, then why does this stuff keep happening? <laughs> Obviously no script there. Um, but I, I think the Chiefs are the clear, clear favorite to win um, – to win the Super Bowl, and I'm going to go ahead and the when the Packers lost to the 49ers, I thought I thought to myself, as long as the Chiefs can beat the Bills, they're going to win the Super Bowl. And uh, the Chiefs almost didn't beat the Bills. It was a tremendous game. Um, so, okay, I, I am out of time here. So thank you so much for watching this video. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Uh, comment down below. Consider subscribing to the channel for more content like this. We're going to keep talking NFL playoffs throughout the throughout the season throughout the rest of the season and then you know i don't probably won't do too much nfl after that maybe until the draft i'm not a big draft you know geek or anything like that but i got a lot of video game content on the channel so if you like games you like gaming um because watch some of my other videos um i'm still in the process of doing the mass effect series and we're going to be playing horizon zero Dawn, or horizon forbidden west here in about three weeks when it launches we're going to be doing a let's play a live stream of that on the ps5 so if that interests you you know, subscribe to the channel and come back for that here, in a, here on February 18th when we, when we get that going. So anyway, thanks so much for watching, and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.